recognizes Representative Pagan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise in support of Equal Pay Day. Today, Tuesday, April 14th, a nationally recognized day. Uh, Equal Pay Day is the date that symbolizes how far into this year a woman must work to earn what a man made in the previous year for doing the same job. Mr. Speaker, that's 103 days. 103 days of women falling behind with about a quarter smaller paychecks. 103 days is a long time. When we talk about pay equality between men and women. Members, can I have your attention, please? We do have a colleague attempting to address us. The chair recognizes Representative Pagan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When we talk about pay equality between men and women, we are comparing women and men with the same educational level, the same work experience, and the same job responsibilities. Pay inequality still exists even after 52 years of the enactment of the Equal Pay Act. And with the passage of the Civil Rights Act just one year later, women and people of color continue to suffer under the consequences of unequal pay. According to statistics released by the 2011 U.S. Census, a year-round full-time woman working in 2010 earned only 77% of the earnings that a year-round full-time man worked, indicating little change or progress in pay equality. Higher education institutions are not free from wage discrimination either. According to the U.S. Department of Education analysis, after controlling for rank, age, credentials, field of study, and other factors, full-time female faculty members are nearly 9% less than their male counterparts. For all of those with daughters, sisters, mothers, grandmothers, neighbors, colleagues, and women friends, pay inequality affects them all. Economic instability for women means less money for our families, our local economies, and threatens women's long-term independence. This pay disparity between men and women has been studied for years and years and years and the attempt to close the pay gap is becoming slower and slower. The average, it is estimated that the average woman may lose up to $530,000 in her lifetime because of the pay gap, according to a study that was just released last month by the Institute for Women's Policy Research. At this rate, Mr. Speaker, Michigan is projected to see pay equality in 2086. That's 71 years from now. Now, Mr. Speaker, I may be one of the youngest legislators here, but I hope it won't take me living to over 100 years old to finally see pay equality. Pay pair policies can be implemented simply and without undue costs or hardships to both public and private sectors. Fair pay policies strengthen and the securities of families today and eases future retirement costs while enhancing Michigan's economy. I want to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. And let me repeat, this is a bipartisan resolution uh, with both Republican and Democratic support. I urge the rest of my colleagues to join with us in declaring April 14th equal pay day in the state of Michigan to fully and finally recognize women's skills and significant contributions to the workforce and encourages businesses to join with us in providing an internal pay evaluation to ensure fairness for both men and women. Mr. Speaker, finally, we have 23 women in the House of Representatives here and four women in the state Senate who receive equal pay for equal work. Not many women in Michigan can say the same, and it is up to us to change this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield my time.
Thank you, Representative Pagan. The question before the House is the adoption of House Resolution 5-1. All those in favor of the resolution will say aye. Those opposed will say nay. The resolution is adopted.